Hello there. We believe you have been blessed by this ministration. We pray your blessings shall remain permanent in Jesus' name. Amen. Kindly do well to subscribe to our channel, by clicking the red button on your screen, and share so others can partake in this blessing. Thank you. Stay tuned for more messages and prayers. Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036359, 0703 768119. Email address lsmedia at livingseed.org or visit our website at www.livingseed.org. Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. This morning, as we want to start looking at serving God acceptably, serving God acceptably, the man whom God accepts. I want to begin by noting with you this morning that before God can accept any service from anybody, the first thing he does is to accept the man. So we cannot begin to talk about serving God acceptably until we have discovered the acceptable man of God. Only the acceptable man of God can be and bring an acceptable service to God. A service will never attract God's presence as long as God is not attracted to the man. Are we together? So every time God looks at what you are doing, what you are doing does not first attract him. What first attracts him is who you are. If God had not accepted you, he can never accept anything from you. Please hear that now. God does not accept anything from a man whom he has not accepted. So the first matter in serving God, in doing anything for God, whether you are going to be a pastor, you are going to be uh, an evangelist, or you are going to be in the uh, public office and your service is going to be acceptable. The first thing that matters to God is if He has accepted your person. If God has not accepted your person, He cannot accept your service, He cannot accept your offering, He cannot accept your sacrifice. May I say again, your service, your sacrifice does not bribe God to accept you. Please get me clear now. Your money, your offering, your sacrificial giving, and your sweat of running around the work of God does not bribe God, does not influence God to accept you 
if he has not accepted you before. So, may we first understand that serving God acceptably does not be begin with serving God. <laughs> Am I confusing you now? Serving God acceptably does not begin with serving God. What does it begin with? It begins with being accepted of God. This is a very, very important principle that you'll find all through the word of God. And what I want to do this morning is just to study that with you from the word of God. If I can lay that as a principle, then our job will be easier when we come back later in the evening to press on. The confusion in the church and in God's work today is that many people think that what God is looking for, that is looking for offering, is looking for service, is looking for sacrifice. But God, honestly, does not accept anything from a man whom he has not accepted. Oh, are we together? Because of time, I want to go on quickly to first establish that with you. Some of you, you want to sing. You have a good voice. But your voice, as good as it is, does not attract God when your person has distracted God. Are you hearing me now? Some of you, you have a very good ability. Ability to preach. And you could really preach. And we need preachers. But do you know that as wonderful as your ability to preach is, God will not accept to use your ability to preach when your person has repulsed him. There is something that God looks for all the time before your service can become of any relevance to him. It is if you, as a person, you have become what? Acceptable to him. Can we search the Bible very quickly and establish this? As we go on. I want you to. It's going to take me. Just searching Bible left and right. And then I will be concluding. This morning is just to lay that. As a foundation. Now in Genesis. All of you please. Move quickly to Genesis. In Genesis chapter 4 we meet the first set of people that were seeking to serve God. We meet Abel and we meet Cain in Genesis 4. Now, the Bible said in verse 3, Genesis 4, 3, are you there? And in process of time, it came to pass that came brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect. Read your Bible very well. And the Lord had what? Respect unto the offering of Abel. Is that what the Bible said? Read it very well. And the Lord had respect unto what? Unto Abel. 
and to his offering. Are we there? Can someone read that for me from any other version? Verse 4. Yes, NIV, the brother. The Lord looked with favor on Abel uh and his offering. Now, before you sit down, let's check verse 5. On Cain uh-huh. On Cain. So, some people used to tell us that God did not accept Cain's offering because it was very small. That it was not, the, the yam were not very fat. I know those people when they are saying that they just want you to bring plenty yam for your Thanksgiving. Sorry. God never eat yam. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God does not eat yam. Neither does he eat meat. So, what was the matter was not the size of offering. It was not even the quantity of it. What makes that service or that offering, that sacrifice acceptable or not acceptable was the man. Is it the man that God can accept? When our brother was giving you testimony of his life, of the journey he has made for many, many years, planting meetings and churches and demonstrating power. What was the issue? What is it that God is putting his finger on and say, mm-mm, mm-mm. God was putting a finger on life. Friends, you can do service that will fill the old land. And ignorant people who don't know what God is looking for might clap for you. They may even follow you. But when he who is looking, when he looks and says, mm-mm, Mm-mm. The work is elaborate, but the man is unacceptable. And God cannot reject a man and receive his work. Are you hearing me? God cannot reject a man and receive his work. God cannot reject a man and receive his money. God cannot reject a man and take anything from him. It will be contradictory. He doesn't do that. So, the first thing we saw was that God had no respect unto Cain. You'll be wondering, is it because of the way Cain dressed? Is it because Cain did not dress well? That's why God did not have respect to him? Can I show you something that God always does? Can I show you? Eh? Go quickly to Psalm. Uh, I'm trusting that the Holy Spirit will give me and you a quick understanding this morning because he is opening a matter. Many men want to serve God. Many people are doing different work for God. But there's a matter that will determine who is finally in heaven or not. Psalm 138. All of
all of you please go to Psalm 138. Would you like to read verse 6? Psalm 138 and verse 6. Are you there? Who reads that for me? 138.6. Read quickly. Do the law be high. Do the Lord be high. He has respect unto the lowly. But the proud, he knows him from afar. Even though God is very high up there, but he has what? Respect unto the lowly. God has respect to the man who is humble. But the man who is proud, the man who is arrogant, the man who thinks highly of himself, no matter what he comes with, no matter his talents, no matter his gifts, no matter his, his zeal, and no matter how crucial the work he wanted to do for God is. God already knows him from afar off and is ready to resist him. When God has not accepted a man, he cannot accept anything from him. Please hear me. Some of you may think that, but we have been supporting church service. We have been giving money. We have been doing this. We have been doing that. It's okay. People can collect it from you. But when we will begin to be serious with God, even pastors will no longer collect offering from a man whom God has not accepted. When we will start walking properly in the will of God and serving God correctly, We will begin to understand the way God does his work. If a man whom God has not accepted should put anything into God's work, it contaminates that work. Some of you don't understand why the work of God is not growing. Why it is not being effective. Because there are mixed hand in the work. People have put their hands in God's work whom God never want to identify with in any way. And as a result, whatever they are contributing will be a canker worm in what God wants to do. So sometimes, because of that, God even looks away from everything. And say that thing is bastardized, is contaminated, because one man that I don't want has put his hand in what I'm doing. Now, just to move quickly, how did we see what God did not respect in Cain? Let's quickly look at it, because I think if I if I rush off. You might not understand. God does not reject a man arbitrarily. Are you hearing me? If God rejects a man, there must be a reason. I don't know whether you are following me at all. God is not a respecter of persons. So he does not practice favoritism. God didn't accept me just because I... I, I, am, I am from Nigeria. No. God does not arbitrarily reject a man. Neither does God arbitrarily accept a man. All the men that God has 
rejected. There was reason for it. And all the men that God have accepted, are you hearing me? There were reasons for it. And you know, as I keep studying the Bible, I keep saying, God, what do you look for in a man you accept? What do you look for? These are my own personal prayer. I don't, you see, for me, I'm not, in, I'm not competing with anybody. What I'm doing is not about you. I'm not concerned about being a big man. I just want to be an acceptable servant in God's hand. I want to be able to get to heaven. And hear God say, welcome my profitable servant. All I'm concerned about is not this crowd. I'm not interested in this crowd. I have never been bothered about what you say or what you don't say. Because your opinion about me means nothing. Your recommendation of me or your disrecommendation of me does nothing. If you shout at me and say, wait, wait, it doesn't do anything. If you clap for me and say, oh, yes, yes, yeah, you're a good man of God, it doesn't do anything. Why do I waste my time with people whose comment has no consequence on my life? Are you hearing me? Why do I waste my time seeking the approval of people whose signature carries no weight? Let me tell you, I'm not insulting you. Your signature carries no weight about my destiny. If you say, Babile, I like you, it's all right. Because since you have mouth to talk, you must talk. It's okay. If you say, Babile, I don't like you, it's okay. There's only one person whose comment matters what God says about me. If 1,000 men say yes, 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 endorse, 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 and God Almighty say condemned. Do you know that one signature of Almighty God nullifies a million signatures of men I pray that God will help you to understand. When Rashidu was telling his story, he wondered why I was looking as if I was wicked. I was not wicked. I was not wicked. Even if I approve him. And I gave him all sense that he's doing well, he's doing well, he's doing well, all right, he's all right, all right. And the, the one with whom we have to deal Continue to put question mark on that man's life. Is he going anywhere? Ah. So you see, people say, Bradley, why do you worry people so much? I'm not worrying you. I do, I'm not worrying you. Who am I to worry you? The one with whom you have to deal is the one that is worrying you. And the issue we are dealing with this morning, the acceptable man of God, the acceptable man in God's hand, if there's anything to spend all your life doing, that is it. If you are going to invest, you must invest in winning God's approval for your life. People's approval, hmm, but did I say that you should be a useless man in the community? No. I've not said that. I've said that before every other commendation, get his commendation first. Are you hearing me? 
you may get PhD in divinity. You may get doctor of divinity in biblical preaching. The major seminary and the minor seminary may have certificated you and said, this is our best man. And the Council of Churches of Ghana may have sat and they have said, we put our stamp of approval on this man. Bam! All these things are good. Do you know that I love them? I would be happy if all the churches would put a stamp of approval on me. But I know in my mind that that stamp is empty. It doesn't move me an inch. If Baba says, I have rejected him. So, can I tell you what I'm preaching to you now? Even if you are not here, I will preach it to myself. So, don't think it's because you are here that I'm preaching to you. I'm not preaching to you. I'm constantly asking, Father, what must you see in my life? And you will push me away. May I not touch it. And the things I'm talking about this morning, I'm not talking about things external. I'm not talking about things on the outside. There are things on the outside that people can easily see and say, you're a useless man. And there are times that people condemns you by your outward. But God looks inside and said, even though the outside doesn't look nice, I have approved it. So, brothers, this issue is not an issue I can finish this time. I can only introduce you to a lifelong issue. Please listen to me. Are you hearing me at all? One of the things that makes it more critical, please hear me. It is only in recent times that I'm beginning to discover that even professional bodies, they are beginning to do this thing. But let me describe it to you the way I have known it. That God approves you at the beginning of your life for ministry or for service is good. But God's approval of your life 20 years ago does not speak if you lost that approval today. Oh, you are not hearing me at all. This approval I'm talking about must be a continuous assessment. Mom, are you hearing me? That God accepted you 10 years ago, that is history. Are you accepted today? This brother was humble at the beginning of his ministry and God accepted him and accepted what he was doing. Suddenly, he became proud because the work of God has increased in his hand. What does God do? As he sees him being proud now, God says, ah, we approved you when you were humble. Now you have shifted. Sorry, you lose approval. So the critical matter of serving God acceptably is not, you know, it's, 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 it's a continuous issue. If this work I'm doing here will be acceptable to God, I 
Brother Aguile must be what? Acceptable to him. If I was acceptable to him by the grace of God for 10 years, he can continue to be identified with all I'm doing for 10 years. But even the 11th year, I lost that divine approval because of something that has now started with my life. What I'm now doing is not acceptable. The unfortunate thing is this. Because God's rating of a life is cumulative. Oh my God. Do you understand what I mean when we say God's assessment is cumulative? What it means is that one is on top of another. And the final assessment is the final assessment. Oh my God. He said, if a man had been righteous all his life and he turned to wickedness, all his righteousness would be what? He would be assessed as a wicked man. So if I'm gaining approval with God, how long should I gain that approval? Continuously. Every day. Every day. Every time. So for Cain, what was the reason why God did not have respect unto Cain and to his offering? Let's quickly search. Now look at it. But Cain, in verse 5, unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was what? Was what? very angry. Excuse me, friend. Cain was what? Very angry. Ah, Angry for what? Do you know that every anger is a manifestation of pride? You know, hearing me. You see, every time you are angry, can I tell you what you are saying? You don't want me to tell you what you are saying. You are saying, why should they do such a thing to me? A person of my caliber, how can you do that to me? Do you know that every time you are angry, your hand is here, your hand is beating your chest. I will hear you say, after all that I have done for them, they don't even recognize somebody. Uh I'm talking, you are talking. Who are you? Sometimes we are in church. You are in a church committee meeting or you are in the choir practice. Just because the choir master said we will not sing your song, what did you do? You got angry and you took your handset and your bag and you walked away and said, let's see how they will make it. Why are you thinking like that? You are having an exaggerated sense of your importance. You are thinking that without your voice, the choir will not hold. That's why you are angry now. God had no respect to Cain because he was a man, a violent man, who in his heart was actually saying, I I want to tell you what he was saying. He was saying, God is obligated to honor me. And if it does not honor me, I am annoyed. He was angry with God for God taking his own decision over him. Ah! 
So if God accepted his offering, he would have thought it was because of his hard work. He would have thought that the respect that God would have for him and for his offering is well deserved. A proud man. Some of you, your anger, your anger against a brother or a sister or even your wife or your husband was simply because something you say, you ought not to talk to me like that. And that even if you want to talk to me, you should have known how to address somebody. If you want to talk, why did you shout on me? Excuse me. Why are you shouting? Are you shouting because I'm deaf or what? Am I a dog that you are barking at me? Ah. It's okay. It's okay. I, I'm even making a mistake talking with a useless non-entity like you. <laughs> Silence is the best answer for a fool. Then you put your hand in your pocket and you go. So he comes to you. It may be your husband. He said, darling, say, what? Sorry now. Sorry for yourself. It's time now. We have to define things in this house. If not the way fate landed me in your house. There were better men that were running after me. The one that is a professor today He wrote me letters. I don't know what pushed me <laughs> to say yes to an in, 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 <laughs> an ingrate like you. You are not even thankful that I lowered myself to marry you. And I know when I married you. I know what you were. Did I meet anything in your house? I closed my eyes to marry you. Hoping that something good will come out of you. Only now to be shouting on me. And you are shouting on me in front of children. <laughs> is that your mind? You must repent quickly. You see, the issue is here. When God looks, He doesn't look at your offering. He doesn't look at your hand. He doesn't look at what you are doing. He looks at who you are. He says, can I accept this man? Can I accept a man that like this? That if we allow God, if I allow my work to grow in his hand, one day, he will take over and use it against me. Leave him. Serving God acceptably does not begin with serving. It begins with being an acceptable man of God. And this is a continuous, please listen to me, it is not an initial prerequisite alone. It's an initial, but it's a continuous cumulative prerequisite. Am I making it difficult for you? If he accepts me now, I must continue to meet up with his condition for acceptability. 
if he has opened his hand to me today, I must continue to remain in his good books so that what I'm doing can be acceptable. It doesn't take anything for a big work to be discarded by God once the man is no more accepted by him. Are we together? Cain was rough. He was very angry. And some of you think that anger is nothing. Some of you can freely get angry. You get angry even on the pulpit. You, you will use the pulpit to abuse people because you are angry. And you don't think it is anything. You think once you already have color, you are permanently a man of God. It's not so, sir. Do you know why Moses did not get to the land of promise? Look at that great man of God. Moses could have been a pharaoh. He was actually being tipped for the next king of Egypt. When he had the call of God, and the Bible said, he forsook Egypt. He forsook Egypt, but he never got to Canaan. Friend, what are you talking about? Look at the great thing he left. He left what looked glorious in his day. And he suffered to win God's approval. He went under this serious discipleship for 40 years under death row. So that God can use him. And he started. And he was doing well. But there was a matter. That he became careless about his anger. God gave him the ten table, I mean the tables of commandment. Do you remember? After 40 days, the thing that God Himself wrote with his hand as he was coming back, and he saw that the children of Israel have already started worshiping idol. And some of you might think. That it was correct to do what he did. You see, what God gave him, the Ten Commandments, the first of it, thou shalt not wash any other God beside me. I wish he was patient enough to just read. The people will have been affected. But anger. Anger. He was so angry that he carried what God Almighty wrote with his hand. Did you think you are going far with anger in your life? When we talk, 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 they say, Well, you see, you see, I'm not always angry, but when I'm angry, you will see the you will see the lion. I'm a lamb, but at the same time, I'm also a lion. You don't take me for granted. You don't take my stu- you don't take my gentility for stupidity. And some of you you do like that and your chest is out. You don't take my gentility for stupidity in this place. Honestly, you are stupid. <laughs> ah. An angry man is a stupid man because you don't understand that one anger will cancel out many years of great wisdom. Can you imagine how, how you have married for 10 years? Whatever you suffered for 10 years, you have suffered it. And you have now had three children in 10 years of marriage. 
What did your husband say to you that enter your head and you pack your loser? Hey, give it to his wife. Let this one. Give it to his wife. Let this let one. I'm tired. And out of anger, you packed out. Listen. Even though they came and begged you, ah, madam, you see, look at your children. Even your children were begging you, Mommy, don't leave us. Mommy, don't leave us. Send me alone. Go and talk to your father. When he's ready to marry, he will come. You will think that you are done well. You don't know that you have become useless, even in the eyes of your children. They say, so this mama can leave us. So this our mother can even go. So when you come back and you are rearranging everything, are you not stupid? You scatter what you be for 10 years. In five days, you scatter it. You are coming to rebuild. People that have nothing to say into your marriage, they are now coming and say, Madam, hey, take it cool. You know, take it cool. You see, there's no marriage without problem. Say, so take it cool. What is it that he is even doing to you? You know, such men, they are very useless. They are helping to tell you that your husband is useless. You say, yes. <laughs> After everybody has already said your husband is a useless man, how do you then go up and down and say, Darlene, Darlene, they say, that's how they talk. We are the one who said you their problem last month. Did you think you are doing well by being angry? He broke what God wrote. He broke it. Out of anger, look at what he did. He broke it, he ground it into powder. He went and poured it into water. He said, go and drink it. How does, how does drinking stone change people's hearts? That's what you do when you are angry. You do useless things. You do things that have no consequence. And when God looked at him, it was surprising. That it was not the children of Israel that God punished. God said, You are broken the tables. Go and make your own table. Go and carve your own stool and bring it. Bring it for another 40 days. He was the one who had to fast again for 40 days. 49. No food. What is the use? And then one day, the last straw that broke the camel's back. He got annoyed. He said, God, these people are crying to me. They are crying to me. Am I the one who delivered them? Why are you telling me to carry them to the land of promise? I'm tired. Kill me now. Kill me now. Don't let me see my, don't let me see my, 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 my problem before I die. Kill me now. He spoke so harshly to God. When I studied the life of Moses, I said, my God, a man that has worked with you for years. So this prerequisite is not just initial prerequisite. What do I call it? Continuous cumulative prerequisite. So that day, you know, God just told him. God did not argue with him. God said, okay, okay. Uh, if you are tired, go and get 70 people that you know. Who does he know? So he went and gathered 70 people. God said, okay, I will take from your spirit. It's not an additional. God was going to reduce what he carried and distribute on all these people. So do you know that as God was taking away from his life, he was reducing. 
he was becoming smaller. Which means what he carried, he alone could have carried it. But when he said, I don't want again, God said, alright. When you read your Bible, from that chapter 11, that's the beginning of his downfall. Some of you thought he fell at the water of Mary, but that's not where he fell. He had fallen before. Things have changed. From that point, his strategy of life has changed. He's now forming a committee. When they were to go to the land of Canaan, now, he now, the people now say, well, we can't go. Let's go and spy the land first. Did they do that when they were living in Egypt? They told him, I said, look, if we are not, and the way we are going to go, we have to do quota system. Every tribe has to be represented. We are 12 tribes, so get us 12 men. We are going. The people selected 12 men to follow them. They came back with terrible report. We are not going anywhere. Can he make them to go anywhere? He couldn't. He has lost authority. So when he now went and struck the rock, it was a normal, it was a continuation of what has happened. And God came and said, since you did not honor me before these people. So you see, he was angry. He said, you stiff naked and uh, confused people, shall we bring you water out of this, out of this rock? Shall we? And you know, as he was saying, shall we? He must have put his hand where? On his chest. And God said, eh? So you, you are beginning now to arrogate yourself to me. I have promised to take you there before, but you can no longer enter. And never you talk to me about it again. He said, he prayed three times. God said, don't talk to me about that again. The best I will do for you is to show you the place from afar off, but your mouth and your feet will not step there. And for the next 40 years, can you see a man of God just roaming around in the ministry? What he could have achieved in 40 days, he was now going around in 40 years with people who are going nowhere. They finished him. On the day that he was going to finish, finally go, he called the people and said, the Lord was angry with me. If you are reading your Bible, it was with me. God was annoyed. And he said, I will not enter. This Joshua will go, but me, I cannot go. He ended his life not entering the promise for which he was destined. Why? But I thank God he humbled himself eventually. He cried to God. God said, I have pardoned you, but you can no longer go in. It was the man that either wins approval or loses approval that determines whether they walk. I wish on that day that Moses was confronted with the people. He said, where shall I get meat for all of these people? They are all crying over me. I was going to ask, where has he been getting all the food he got for them before? Was it from his pocket? Why was he being arrogant? Where shall I get meat for all these people? They are crying to me. Ah, he missed the point. This approval I'm talking to you about, you don't only get it at the beginning, you must keep getting it until you die. I don't know whether we're together. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. He was rough and his countenance fell. When they say his countenance fell, that means. He got so angry that if you look at his face, his face is so 
that energy is not just Good morning, brother. King said, Don't greet me. If I came to say, Brother, ah, we thank God. Hey, he said, You thank God for what? Get out from here. Everybody was confused because his countenance fell. Can you imagine how some of you, you are going to your office? Anybody was unfortunate to meet you on that day when your anger is on your head, they are in problem. Anybody, even the cleaner in the office. Ah, good morning. Wait, wait, wait. Is that how to sweep? Is that how to sweep? If you don't take that, I'll sack you from here. Ah. And the lady that is sweeping the ground said, What have I done to Madame today? She has not done anything. Madame is having problems from somewhere. This is transferred aggression. <laughs> Some of you are thinking that it doesn't matter. That you can just get annoyed and just go away and just close up like that. You don't understand that the issue of life that God raises for any man he wants to use overrides his activity. Look at that. The Lord said to Cain, This is the second point I'm saying with Cain. Why are you? Why are you angry? Can you see the gentility of the Almighty God? God came and said, Why are you angry? And why is your countenance falling? Bro, why? You will notice, say, If thou doest well, shall you not be accepted? Who did not do well? Who did not do well? Is it this yam that did not do well? Talk to me. God was not concerned about yam. God was concerned and said, you are not doing well. Please turn to somebody by your side and say, are you really doing well? You know, you know, sometimes it's very important. To ask, are you doing well? Are you doing well secretly? Are you doing well privately? Are you doing well? If you have done well, will you not be accepted? The word of God said. And if you are not doing well, look at the way the God was cancelling, God was cancelling a, a, a mere man like this. Sin, sin does what? Sin lies at the door. Read it from NIV for me. Read that verse 6 and 7. Quickly. Yes. Why are you angry? Why as your face downcast? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Did you hear God talking to a man like this? He said, look, if you have done well, will you not be accepted? And this is a very important issue. But if you are not doing well, See, is what? Is crouching at your door. I don't know whether you can understand the meaning of that. See, is doing what? Is crouching at your door. See, is just doing like this around your door. And what is seen looking for? What is seen looking for? Is desiring you. Some of you don't understand what what the devil wants. My brothers, my sisters, he said, sin is crouching at your door. Is anybody carrying 
a local Bible in Tui. Read it. Read it with a loud voice. Verse 6 and verse 7. Did you hear that? See, is digging your grave. When they say it's crouching, it's crouching. The understanding I have is that sin is digging for your grave. Is looking for where you will be buried. And it's not doing it for someone else. His desire is for you. And what did God say to him? You must master it. Don't let him master you. Do what? Master it. You don't have to fall into the grave that sin is digging for your feet. You must master it. Because if sin masters you, you are finished. God came. God, when there was no preacher, he came to preach to Cain. Are you hearing me? This is God himself coming all the way from heaven to say, Cain, Cain, why are you angry? Cain, why is your face sad? I could see a stiff naked Cain. So, huh? Why would my face not be sad? You didn't accept me. Ah. You accepted my junior brother. You didn't accept me. God said, if you have done well, will you not have been accepted? What you should have asked me, I said, excuse me, sir. What is wrong with me that you have not accepted me? And I will have told you. You only squeezing your face for nothing. Cain, I can see sin digging your grave at your door, so that as soon as we come out, there is already a ditch that sin has dug for your feet. If you don't take time, you are going. You must master it. I thought he would have fallen on his knees. I said, God, have mercy on me. Deliver me. Deliver me. Lead me not into temptation. Deliver me from the evil. I don't know what has come over me. Lord, I'm sorry. I want to do well. He didn't cry. He didn't cry. Look at what he did. That's why God... Do you know that if any of you sitting here that you are a sinner is not the first problem but that you are hiding it that you are not willing to repent that you are arguing about your mis- misbehavior some of you you have canonized your wrong active activity you try to look for one bible verse or you try to look for one preacher who will not tell you the truth when you are about to be disciplined in your other church, you quickly went and formed another church so that you can be the general overseer. You are not going anywhere. Sin is crouching at your door. He's digging your grave. And his desire is for you. He's looking for you. But you must master it. 
Oh, you see the problem? Cain did not pray. Cain did not beg. You know what he did? He ignored the word of God. He ignored the instruction from the Holy Spirit. What did he do? He rather talked with Abel, his brother. And it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. Did you understand that now? Can you see the progress? The progression of his misbehavior. That's why God rejected him. Instead of repenting, he said, I know what I will do. I will kill this boy. If it is his own righteousness that makes God to keep same problem with my life, I will kill him. He didn't get out of this place. He thought that death was the end of Abel. He didn't know that there's something that will speak louder than voice. He did not know that blood speaks louder. Hey, are you here this morning? You as a young woman, you went. Of course, when you were fornicating, God warned you. Don't go near that man. This boy is dangerous. Don't visit him. One day you carry your hand back and you went to his house. He said, if he does anything, I will tell him I'm not ready. You were so, you were so convinced in yourself that you'll be able to resist his advance. But when he came, he just touched your nose. And that's how all your guts scattered. Before you know it, you are in his arms. He didn't do something serious that day. You managed to escape. The Spirit of God came to confront you. Your mother said, Where did you go? Uh, I didn't go anywhere, you know. I was just doing mathematics, so uh, we were studying maths, that's why. Was it mathematics you went for? The next time you went. And this time. Nothing could stop it. And it's left with you. One month after. It became clear that you have now taken in. Hey! Our church pastor was not here. My parents must not know about this. Shame. 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 You are going up and down. Ah, what do we do? What do we do? The boy said, well, don't call on you. You should have been reasonable. If you mention my name, I will deal with you. Ah, what do I do? What do I do? That's how you thought. The death of the baby inside will finish it. You don't know that a living baby, his voice is not as strong as the voice of a shed blood. You don't know. You don't know that the blood speaks louder than ordinary human voice. When a man is not yet dead, his voice may not be heard. But if you kill a man, his blood will keep shouting. Everywhere you go, everywhere you go, everywhere you go, 20 years is still shouting. That's why, even after many years that you thought you have forgotten it, the thing still comes back. Sometimes you will be dreaming. And you will see that baby crying as the doctor was trying to use the forces to crush his head inside and bring it out. Blood was crying. 
But you see, when the blood cries, only another blood can silence it. Blood for blood. In the Old Testament, when you do that, you must die. Because only blood can silence blood. But thank God. There is a fountain blood that flows from Emmanuel's vein. And sinners plunge beneath his floor and save to sin no more. He save to sin no more. He said to sin no more. And sin a plunge beneath his floor. And say to see no more. Only the blood of Jesus can silence blood. And some of you say, Well, I won't talk about it. Ah, you are not going far. Cain thought he could cover sea. So what did he do? As he killed his brother and the blood gushed, what did he do quickly? He just he, he crouched. The way sin was crouching at his door, he started crouching. He quickly dug one shallow grave and buried his brother. And so that nobody would see the blood that was flowing, he quickly put sand on top of everything. Then he washed, he washed his hands so well. He, he, the stain that may have fallen on his clothes, he washed it very well and changed clothes and used perfume. And he was now walking in, in, in town. He's walking in town. The Almighty God came back to this man. Cain! Where is Abel your brother? Where is Abel, your brother? He said, I don't know. What are you noting there now? A liar. Did you see that in one king, you can see all that God would not have looked at and accepted him? He was a liar. Maybe because one sin that you have not confessed is making you to tell more lies. One sin that if you had confessed it and said, excuse me, I made this mistake, have mercy on me. They may, they may cry, they may beat you, but at least you will have been free. You will have been free. But now, Ten years, you are still telling lies. Ten years. The boy that you delivered and you dump. You wake up in the middle of the night, you are hearing the voice of the cat. Mommy, mommy, mommy. You, you, you now go for deliverance and say, eh, I hear strange voices in my, in my dream. I need you to deliver me. And unfortunately, men of God who just love deliverance of any kind, he said, yeah, come down here, come down here. Yo, 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 yo. Waste of time. Waste of time. What's the meaning of all of that? You are not taking them to the root. Let's say the voice that I'm hearing is the voice of that baby that I don't. I don't want anybody to know I have that baby anywhere. So you are doing like a CC in the city. You are moving like this. And brothers think that you are a young girl. They didn't know that all of this is perfume and pomade. <laughs> the same vision for you 
not knowing that there is no vision for you. So you hide it. So sometimes you have nightmares in the night. Say, yeah, yeah, yeah. They say, what's happening? Say, I don't know what this uh, mommy water spirit is just troubling somebody. It is not mommy water anything. It is the voice of the blood cry. Lives that you have abandoned. You should have repented. You should have gone. Let's go and bring that boy back. That's your son. Bring him. And let's see where God will take your life from. That you fell into sin is not the problem. God is willing to forgive the violence of Edna, but that you hide it. The Bible says, Whosoever covereth his sin shall not do what? Prosper. Cain could not prosper, he was hiding. God said, Eh? You mean you don't know? You don't know where Abel is? Behold! The blood. Did you see how God concluded that? He said, What have you done? What do you think you have done? The voice of your brother's blood cries unto me from the ground. And now are you cursed from the earth, which has opened her mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you till the ground, it shall not answer yield unto you her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shall thou be in the earth. Can you imagine? I thought Cain was going to fall on his knees and say, God, have mercy on me. Oh, have mercy on me. Oh. Do you know what he said? What did he say? He said, God, I ah, lazy for you now. This is too much. Huh? What thing I do and you are now giving all this to me? You see, you don't understand. I've met people that they don't know the gravity of sin. A brother misbehaved so grossly. And we were all crying and weeping and crying to God that God will have mercy on us. When he stood up, he said, well, you know, there's nobody who doesn't make mistake. And this should be a lesson for all of you here. You see? He's so quick, he started preaching. He never saw the gravity of what he did. To him, it was a little thing after all. And that God is promising to use him so mightily. Ah. Wicked man. Immediately he said, This punishment is too much for me. I can imagine some of you, you think that just for them to ask you to stand up in the open church to confess the terrible thing you did and for them to excommunicate you for two months, three months, he said, it's too much. They don't love somebody in that church. Huh? If I fall into sin, God has forgiven me while they're making life difficult for somebody. And you walked out arrogantly to go and join another church. And the pastor there said, well, you see, we are not God. If God has forgiven you, we are so far so forgiven you. We don't make life difficult for people. Join the choir. <laughs> you think you are going far. If I were a member of the choir, I know that once that that woman or that man joined the choir, all our songs are contaminated. Friends, as we talk to God, what is it that you are thinking? What punishment is too big? Instead of into further and say, God, have mercy on me. Oh, I made a mistake. Maybe God will have forgiven him. But he never, there was no sorry in his mouth. There was no repentance in his voice. He was always speaking. My punishment is greater than I can bear. 
Behold, you have driven me out of this out this day from the face of the earth, and from the face, and from your face shall I be hid, and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth, and it shall come to pass that everyone that finds me shall slay me. What's the meaning of that? He doesn't want to die, but he has killed somebody. And I said, God does not reject anybody arbitrarily. God is not a respectable person. Excuse me. God does not. Don't think God is just having quarrel with you for nothing. God is not like that. Please. If there is nothing there, God will not have held you out there. If you see God pegging your progress, there is a problem. Stop looking for sympathy of human beings. As saying, well, I don't know. Hey, it's because they don't like me in that church. And yeah, 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 yeah. You didn't tell them what you did. And because some of you, you like to move where people don't know you. You like to move to a place where nobody knows you. Nobody in the whole of that congregation, in that fellowship, nobody knows you. Don't know where you are coming from. You just you just landed like an angel. The day a brother that knew where you came from comes from that fellowship, that's the day you say, Well, you see, some people are here always looking for people's faults. You see, let us not be legalistic here. The man whom God has forgiven, he has forgiven. Why are you talking like that? Because you have now seen somebody who knows your history. Who knows your story. Who knows where you are coming from. People like to go to where nobody can tell anything about them because they just want to be new. No. Cain said, this punishment is too much. He didn't beg, didn't beg. He was only complaining about punishment. How many of you complain so much and the way the pastor even uh, announced it? He just wants to disgrace my ministry. You, when you were sleeping with the girl in the secret, you never thought that it would come out. You love to be respected. You did not respect yourself. I see people quarreling with the pastor. Saying, hey, 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 hey. Why did they announce it? You should have called me privately. You should have prayed for me. Is that how to be a shepherd? So you know so much about shepherding. <laughs> Instead of humbling yourself. You go on the path of argument and criticism. And even if, even if, even if they were to even punish somebody, why did they make it indefinite suspension? Ah, uh-uh. two months should have been enough. So anybody that sees me now, they will be laughing at me on the road. Eh? Look at that big church where they announced it. So that anywhere I'm going, people just be looking at me. I say, look at him, look at him. You see, he has not repented. It's only the fear of shame that he's quarreling about. I see people, they only show remorse, no repentance. Simply because they, they, they love their name. They love their ministry. They love people's impression. They don't love God. Are you here today? You wonder why I'm speaking like this. It's because until God accepts you, He doesn't accept anything from you. May it not be that you are running in vain. And even if you were accepted five years ago, are you still winning that approval this year?
It is now compulsory for doctors. Before it was not like that. Once a doctor qualifies and he registers with the medical council, he's a doctor forever. But now, is there any medical doctor here? Do you notice now that they, there's something they call continuous medical exam, uh, education? So all doctors, they have to go for fresh training every year. And they must accumulate a certain amount of credit before they can be licensed to practice the next year. Nurses are also compared to go. Pharmacists are compared to go to update themselves so that their license can be current. If they are doing it in the world, you think God will not do it. Is your license to preach, is it current? Is your license to speak into people's lives, is it current? Is your license to stand for God, is it current? Are you still a man approved and accepted of God? And since he will not repent, he rather complain that my punishment is greater than I can bear. Then the Lord said to him, Not so. Therefore, whosoever slays Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. Ah! You are not understanding? God set a terrible mark on his life and said, This one, until he suffers and suffers, he will not die. You see, death will have ended his problem. But God said, you are not dying. You will live to suffer. So God set a mark of rejection on his head. Don't get to that point where heaven will put a mark of rejection on your life. Don't go to that level. Don't go to the extent where God will have announced Oh, my brothers, do you know there are preachers? They impregnated somebody here. They moved away. They scattered another man's home here. They moved away. They went somewhere again. They moved away. They went somewhere again. They scattered something. They moved away. They are moving everywhere. Until God was compelled to put a vote of no confidence permanently on their lives. Until God makes sure he scatters everybody that could have listened to them. God said, don't listen to him again. Don't get to that level. Don't get to that level. Sin unconfessed is also progressive. If you keep covering sin and you don't confess it, he continues to grow deeper. May God give you help in the name of Jesus. So where do we stop? I said I would have loved to go round and round. But you see, Cain seemed to be sufficient for us this morning. But you need to go and look at other men like Saul. A man that God had to reject because of disobedience. You need to go and look at the senior brothers of David. God said, I have rejected him. I have rejected him. The first thing I must win in my life is God's approval. But let me ask you, when shall I win that approval? When? I'm not hearing you. I must win that approval continuously. It must be a cumulative approval that God has approved me time Ten years, five years, even last year is not enough. Even today, I must have a continuous medical examination, continuous education, continuous edification, continuous sanctification, continuous that makes me acceptable before God. 
So for me, it's a daily issue. What do I call it now? Day by day. I must keep presenting myself before God and say, Lord, is there anything that will make you look away from me? Is there anything creeping around me? Is there anything crouching around my door? Is there anything I'm beginning to enter into that will discredit me in your presence? Lord, point it to me. Am I getting dangerously close to the opposite sex? Am I beginning to tamper with church money? Am I beginning to lose my sense of humility and getting angry with everybody? Am I getting quietly addicted onto wrong things? Addicted to television, addicted to, 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 to films, addicted to internet? Am I getting addicted? Lord, don't let me progress. Young man, are you getting dangerously down? That you fell into sin once with a girl is not the issue, but that you didn't confess it, it has progressed. Sin, unuprooted, we grow. That's the problem of it. So this morning, the man that God rejects can never serve God acceptably. Because the first thing is not serving, is the man. So we'll be praying this morning. But what is the good news this morning? The good news that Jesus says, for you I shed my blood. Let me believe that you did it in ignorance because you didn't know Said the time of ignorance, God winked out. And he has commanded every man everywhere to do what? To repent. Don't say, ah, and you, I'm always hearing this kind of message. You are hearing it today. Because today is an opportunity to turn. Don't let that sin that is crouching at your door, don't let it master you. You must master it. As we will pray to God this hour, I want you to say to God, I must master this. It must not master me. What is the good news? There's a blood. There is a fountain. There's a fountain flowing for you. There's a place where the vilest sins can be dissolved. The stain that has been on your spirit for years, it can be dissolved today. My brother, you don't need to go on. God has brought you. I believe that this meeting is a stopgap. And I must tell you the truth. If God had finished with you, he would not have brought you here. God brought you here because he has hope for you. There's a future that God is still looking at for you. And say, your past is too small to destroy your future. That's why he, bring his, he brought you here. Yes, you may have made terrible mistakes before, but what lies ahead of you is bigger than your past. So, why can't we correct it? You must take a step this morning. Maybe you have been annoyed with those who are trying to discipline you, can you need that and say, I'm sorry for being annoyed with those who disciplined me before. Maybe you left that church and you have gone to another church. I will tell you this morning, go back to that church. Where they knew you, that's where your life can be helped. Where you are now, nobody knows you. They don't know your issue. They don't know where you are coming from. Hey, you're only deceiving them and they're deceiving you. Go back. Go and submit yourself to that discipline and say, Joe, I ran away because I thought the shame was too much. But I realized now I can't go far unless you people forgive me. Go back. Go back. Don't say, but the way the pastor talks that time, 
He really, really disgraced me. In fact, he exaggerated what I did not do. But you did something. If there is no fire, there can be no smoke. Even if you slept with only one woman and they say you slept with ten women, it's because there was a fire. That's where the smoke is filling everywhere. Instead of complaining, and they exaggerated it. I only slept with one more, but they say I, I slept with ten. Keep your mouth shut. Such explanation is not good in your mouth. The only thing that is good in your mouth is Lord. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. I gave occasion for the devil. I gave occasion for them to reproach your name. I gave occasion for Satan to talk. Have mercy. What is the good news? What is the good news? Jesus says, come. I will make all things new. God will not only forgive you, he will make you new. Please hear me. What's the good news? The good news is that he is not going to continue to remember your wrong things. He will give you a brand new beginning. You can be brand new by the grace of God. God can handle all the situation. You say, ah, but, but can I ever have a good marriage again? God can make it new. If you come. But if you keep it for another 10 years, for another 10 years, you postpone and procrastinate the day of your blessing. You make it more complicated. So we pray this morning. And as you talk to God on, 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 on sincerely, please, it's not because I'm the one talking. This is the Lord speaking to your heart. What can wash away my sin? Oh, nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Oh, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Ah, oh, precious is the flaw that makes me white as snow I know other fun I know yea nothing but the blood of Jesus will you pray will you pray if God has not accepted a man, he has nothing to do with his offering. He has nothing to do with his sacrifice. He has nothing to do with his service. If God has not accepted a man, his labor is virtually in vain. And if we did not open up to God for Him to have mercy and we only cover, he that covereth sin shall not prosper. If God has finished with you, He will not let you hear this message. God has not finished with you, my brother. God honestly has a great plan for you. And as we pray together, just tell God, Yarama, I have thought that anger will not do me anything. I have thought that pride will not do anything. I have thought that secret sin will not stop things. But I'm realizing today, it can cost me everything. Lord, I'm here. Have mercy on me. Don't let me go from this meeting back to where I'm coming from. Don't let me go to my vomit. Lord, help me. 
Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Spirit of God, walk in our midst today. The man God rejects can never offer an acceptable service. Acceptable service only comes from an accepted man. Lord, have mercy on us. This morning, and we just have two, three minutes to conclude this because we must be ready to go for Bible study. Will I ask you this moment, as you are hearing the Spirit of God speak differently? Pointing at different issues, different areas, different matter. Ranging from lying, cover up, onto anger and arrogance and pride, onto murder, abortion, addiction, crouching of sin around your door. God said you must master it. I want to give room this morning. There is a fountain filled with blood. There's a bath here where you can dip yourself and all the stain will be gone. You can't keep nursing your past mistakes in your heart. Release it, bring it before the Lord this morning and say, God, just as I am without one plea, but that your blood was shed for me and that you bid me come to you, O Lamb of God, I come. I come as I stand before God this morning. Maybe yesterday night the Spirit of God do touched you, but you didn't see the gravity as to take a personal step before God. Maybe you thought I've been going out too much. This is not like before. This is a new day. The approval you are needing is not that you were approved 10 years back. It must be a regular, continuous, current approval. This morning, you want to step before God. You sense that, let me take my life to the Lord this morning. Let me plunge into the blood that cleanses without leaving a stain. The things I've been hiding for years. Let me make it open to God this morning. And open it to whosoever God will use to help me. Can you lift up your right hand where you are? And say, Lord, I'm the one. And I need you. I just want to tell God. I need you, Lord. Look at how many years. You are now almost permanently crippled. You are running up and down, but you couldn't give God what is acceptable. This morning, I need you. I need a touch. Touch me, Father. In the name of Jesus. If you are on your knees before God this morning and as you lift up your hands to God no there's no explanation than to say Lord it's your mercy I need it's your mercy I need
Don't let this matter finish me. Don't let me be a victim of my conscience. There's power mighty in your blood. Let it dissolve this matter. I have complained about the way I was treated, but I did not repent. Have mercy on me this morning. Just leave those hands to God. Who touch me now, my Savior? I come to thee. Who touch me now, my Savior? I come to God will do what no man can do for you today. I want you to know that God could not have been bringing you to this altar if he just wants to ridicule you. Here there is help. At his feet there is forgiveness. I want you to believe God that this issue as you open it God will work with you to correct it until everything is put right. Sin has crouched for too long on your door. God will give you victory over it today. Lord, thank you this morning. Lord, we bow before you. Knowing that you are only the God that can send us help. On our knees, we come. Many have run in vain because of this omission of their own lives approval before you. Many works have become useless. All because the worker will not find favor with God. We kneel before you together. You didn't bring these men and women to this altar only to ridicule or condemn them. You brought them that you might cleanse, you may forgive, you may pardon, you may restore. And replace what was lost. This morning, Father, let mercy prevail over judgment. In wrath, remember mercy. We've done wrongly. We've not done well. But we are coming to you who say, Come. I will give you a second chance. Come. I will not cast you out. Father, we are praying this morning. Let mercy prevail over our cage. Individuals, oh God, different issues that they have covered that they need to open. Some are saying, hey, if my husband should hear, where will I face? Father, we are praying that you will undo this for us. Fear has kept many in bondage for years. But today we are willing not to keep it. We are willing to let you have your way with us. Please have your way this morning. The blood that speaks better things than that of Abel. Let it speak for us today. That fountain filled with blood. Let it take away every stain. Every guilty stain. That has settled on our conscience for years. Let it dissolve this morning. And let there be a fresh touch, a fresh visitation, a fresh release of your grace in the name of Jesus. Let forgiveness flow from your hand this morning. Father, 
even as this happens before you. Whatever restitution must be made, show us how to do it. As we sit in counseling today, we are asking that help will come to us from heaven. And that this will become a beginning of revival. First in our own lives, in our own families, in the churches where these people have come from. Lord, we are praying that it will be a revival. And they will begin to do what is acceptable before you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Hello there. Thank you for viewing this channel. It is our utmost desire that you are blessed by our content. So, we covet your support in our quest for God's kingdom expansion. Kindly help us grow by subscribing to our channel and share it to your loved ones. Remain blessed as you listen.